Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Elaine Ekus. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, Better Than Right, Appreciation, Beauty, Community. Available for purchase through Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com. But if you guys want to gather everything that Elaine has to offer, do yourself a favor and head directly to her personal site. And that's Better Than Right by ElaineEkus.com. So Better Than Right by Elaine, all traditional spelling. Her last name, E-A-C-H-U-S dot com. Now there, not only will you find more information on Elaine herself, You'll find more information on this fantastic narrative, Better Than Right, as well as find hyperlinks set up to take you to the purchasing page. So one more time, that's Better Than Right by ElaineEkus.com. And guys, while you're there, make sure you're looking into her second book as well, or, well, technically the first book that she's written as well. And that one's called Thanksgiving Leads to Christmas. And guys, I will say that Elaine was brought to our network people of distinction today by some of the best movers in the business author reputation press publishing so if you have a book that you'd like moved do yourself a favor and contact our great friends over at arp and you can find out more information on them at authorreputationpress.com and guys listen it is an absolute pleasure to have elaine here on the line The moment you go to her Amazon page, her Barnes & Noble page, or you go directly to her personal site and you start to do any research on this book, you instantly understand what we're going to be discussing. Now, it's an inspirational memoir, and it takes many forms, sometimes poetry, sometimes song, sometimes prose. But what's amazing about it is it's all about how when we're faced with challenges, there's a lot of options that we have in front of us. And it really just depends on the perception that we choose to take and the route that we choose to take. That makes all the difference. And I don't know about you guys, but given this past year and a half to two years with this pandemic and the variation of lockdown that we've all experienced, I can certainly use an inspirational narrative to really help push me through this last leg of it. Right? I mean, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not quite there yet. So there's a lot of turbulence. There's a lot of uneasiness in the air. And a book of this magnitude could not have come at a better time. And listen, Elaine is the expert. She's written the book. She's pulling from her experience. And she's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Elaine, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction. And thank you so much for being a guest. Thank you very much. It's absolutely our pleasure having you here on the network. And I know we have so much information to cover. So let's not waste any more time and let's head right into the book. Better Than Right, Appreciation, Beauty, Community. Tell us a little bit more about your narrative. My narrative is trying to help us um, get rid of um, the either or mindset that we have so much of. It can't be, if it's this, it can't be that. And as I thought about this and reflected on some experiences that were very germane in the past seven years of my life, I realized that we got to find some other paradigm that holds these conflicting images or these conflicting narratives or whatever it is, that there has to be a way that we can become whole people, even with our uniqueness and even with our difference. So when I thought about the title, I realized that we had to find a way that there's something better than being right in our human experience, and particularly in our experience that we've gone through with COVID and with the experiences of of politics and the experiences of dissent, that we've got to find some way to do this. And so this book is a distillation of, of my conjecturing that there might be a some other things that would be more important than being right. And the things that I came to with the understanding of how to appreciate, how in appreciating what we have experienced or what we have or the friends 
in our life or what we've been given is the appreciation that opens our hearts and we start to blossom. The other thing that was is crucial to me is is beauty, and particularly because of the pandemic, and we were confined to quarters, as it were. My husband and I spent a lot of our time walking around our the place where we live, and we both have cell phones, and we took pictures. And what we discovered in this thousand feet of where we live was incredible beauty and tiny things we'd never noticed before. We saw in all their in- intricacy, we saw in all their relationships to other things in nature, and the beauty simply overcame us. And the last thing that I, did, that I personally was looking for um, is a community, uh, some place where I can come in and sit down and the conversation starts naturally, and we can be who we are, and we can disagree a little bit, we can affirm each other, we can notice the, the gifts that the other person is to us. And so that's a long-winded answer to my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, well worth every second, well worth. Now, you know, Elaine, next question that I want to go into, and thank you for, for your description, because you also tackled the title, which is another concept I wanted to go into. So we're going to keep it pushing past that, and let's go into inspiration. Now, Elaine, I know from speaking to you on the pre-screening call that your memoir is slightly different because traditionally memoirs are covering that person's entire life. But this book doesn't. It doesn't cover your entire life. I think you started back in 2014. So talk to us a little bit more about why this this period, why these past six, seven years or so, was that inspirational to you that you felt you needed to go and embark upon this journey and write this particular narrative better than write? A friend of mine um, up after me to come with her to on a trip sponsored by a, a group of Episcopalian women, primarily from New England and North Carolina, to Palestine. And while we would be in Israel, we would be specifically looking and meeting with women in Palestine. We would see what their life was like, what they were experiencing, and um, how they conducted their life in the environment they found themselves in. And I was, um, I was, my socks were knocked off. It was such a revelation to me about how people deal with other people. And um, I am a pastor, and I came home from the trip, and I didn't talk. To, I didn't give church tours or go places and talk at potluck luncheons and things like that. I just, it just had to sort of sift, and I had to let it be within me because the experience was so different than what, I thought I would see, and I, I just didn't have words at the time, so it took a long time, but as I went through this experience, you still have to do certain things, and so in the book, um, I write a column called The Northern Gardener for a small church in, here in Florida, and it's talking about gardening up north in Illinois and gardening down here. And what I'm trying to do is show some of the analogies and the the comparisons between being a gardener and understanding life and seeing what life has to offer for us. And so it was, um, that was some of the the things that I was doing. I was still doing things. I was still writing songs and hymns. And so some of the book is some of these things that I have written over these past seven years. But basically the, the crux of the book is how I've come to understand that we need to go forward in a different way, in a different metaphor, in a different context, um, so that we can be fully appreciative, fully aware, and fully in love with this amazing creation that we live in. No, and sticking with the concept of inspiration, now, as I mentioned before, this is not the only book that you've written. 
Now, Better Than Right is technically the second book that you wrote. And the first one is called Thanksgiving Leads to Christmas. Now, I'm curious, Elaine, what inspired you to embark upon a creative journey and become a writer? Was this an interest of yours that you've always had? Were there artists that inspired you? Talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, I studied journalism in college. Um, But I find that people, the spoken word and people who speak their convictions and speak their hearts um, resonate with me. And um, one of the persons that I read um, while I was on this uh, spiritual journey, if you will, was an Islamic scholar and poet, a Sufi mystic, and his name was Rumi. And he lived in the 13th century, so he's been around a while. What he said was this, out beyond our ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I will meet you there. So this was, this was it. I was, I was ready to go for this because I thought, yeah, that's what we've got to do, is we've got to get beyond our images of who's right and who's wrong. To meet in this field where we can become people and experience life and our living and our differences and our similarities and find a commonality. So I've been out looking for that field for seven years. Again, here in the line with Elaine Ekus. We're discussing her fantastic book, Better Than Right, Appreciation, Beauty, Community. Available for purchase through Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, or directly through her personal site, Better Than Right, by ElaineEkus.com. You know, Elaine, next question that I'd love to go into, and you've already started to touch up on this in variations throughout the interview, so thank you very much for that. But as we've already discussed, the, the, the past couple of years with this pandemic has really created a lot of, a lot of tension, right? a lot of obstacles, a lot of turbulence. So I want to take this opportunity, Elaine, Any words of wisdom or any tips that you can offer our listening audience, anybody out there that finds themselves going through a tough time but isn't really sure how to find the light at the end of the tunnel, what words of wisdom would you be able to relay? A great deal of patience for all of us. We've all had to be patient beyond anything we ever thought we could do. And we also have to fine-tune our listening and our looking skills. And we have to listen for those little words or those little breaks where we can see the light shine. We have to look for the wonderful way that little things are happening or how someone has caught our essence or has caught a, a vision and are willing to share it because It's going to be the little things that change us. And when we change, the world changes. It's kind of, it's terribly boring. It's terribly monotonous. And it's terribly exciting to think that this pandemic can give some of us, hopefully all of us, a new way to look at the world, a new way to look at ourselves, and a new way to be surprised the wonder of being on the third planet from the sun. There you have it. You know, last question, and really a curiosity for myself, Elaine. What would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon this journey? Um, I think the, the gift of this book was another person. And the other person <laughs> was my husband. And he was so helpful in helping me (laughs) get through all the computer stuff that you need to do to write a book and to help me uh, look up the references of the resources that I've used and his unfailing patience um, through all of this. And I think each one of us will find the person or persons who give us uh, a little spark, a little gift, who give us the gift of confidence in ourselves when we don't have it. And what a tremendous gift that is. 
Um, so that I think we have to look and listen and be aware that, that there is a wonderful, mysterious world we still need to discover. Mm-hmm. The first book that you wrote was called Thanksgiving Leads to Christmas. Now, Elaine, since we have a few minutes here, if you can give us a brief description of that other narrative that you've written, we'd love to hear about it. The title came from a parishioner who was listening to my sermon on Thanksgiving, and he said, I'll never get to Christmas. (laughs) And he threw up his hands and said, I'll never make it. I'll never get to Christmas. (laughs) And I was thinking about that, and I, I just started to chuckle because, you know, look at the calendar. Thanksgiving does lead to Christmas. And so I took all the days, one at a time. It's a day book. And um, each day I wrote something uh, for a person for me to think about um, on that day. And just, you know, uh, I will always remember him because I said, I'll never make it to Christmas. And I thought Thanksgiving does lead to Christmas. And I think at a deeper level, when we are thankful we can come to see the newness in life, regardless of our religious tradition and experience. But that, that thankfulness opens our eyes to the things that we see, so that we can come to that place where there is a, a joyous celebration of, of the newness in life. There you have it. Guys, you know what I love so much about all of this? Is listen, we've discussed so much information today. We've covered better than right. We've covered Thanksgiving leads to Christmas, but yet we've barely scratched the surface. There's still so much information left to be discovered with each of those narratives, and that's why there's no getting around it. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Better Than Right by ElaineEkis.com are the places you have to go. Better Than Right, Appreciation, Beauty, Community is the title you have to pick up and make sure you're looking into Thanksgiving leads to Christmas as well. By Elaine Ekis. You surely will not be disappointed. Guys, fantastic narratives and wonderful gifts to have at any point of your life. But especially given the past two years that we've all been through. So let's grow, let's develop, and let's educate ourselves. And it starts with this fantastic narrative. Elaine, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Thank you, Benji. Thank you for that.